Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text that engages us this morning is the Gospel reading from Luke chapter 10. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock, our Redeemer. Amen. Which one am I? That's the question that we ultimately ask ourselves as we engage with this story of two sisters who have welcomed Jesus into their home. Am I a Mary who has chosen the good portion and sits at the feet of Jesus? Or am I a Martha who is too busy doing what she is supposed to be doing and becoming indignant with her sister who isn't? Mary's the example for us to follow while Martha is the warning. Don't be like Martha. Or perhaps Luke is sharing this story with us with a much bigger purpose than deciding which of the two sisters we most resemble. Maybe the question we should be asking is, what is Jesus up to in this story? Now, as the disciples went on their way, Jesus entered a village. Now, Jesus and his disciples are making their way to Jerusalem. It's the place where he has set his face, his attention, his focus. He knows he is going to the cross and is fully aware of every moment that is in store for him along the way. And it's along the way that Jesus decides to make a stop in this particular village. Right away, Luke tells us that Jesus is up to something. And when Jesus enters a place, he doesn't leave it as he found it. And a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. See, this is why the phrase, don't be like Martha, shouldn't be your takeaway from this story. It's easy for, to forget that she is the sister who welcomes Jesus into their house. She is the person of peace that Jesus had told the 72 that they would encounter when he sent them out to proclaim the gospel at the beginning of this chapter. Martha doesn't send him away or tell him that they're too busy for company. She welcomes him in. And so she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. And Luke uses that same phrase in the book of Acts as he tells us about Paul describing his experience about having been brought up at the feet of Gamaliel. To sit at the feet of a rabbi meant that one was a disciple of that rabbi. It was a sacred interaction to sit at his feet. And from the moment that Mary sat at Jesus' feet, she had become a disciple of Rabbi Jesus. But not Martha. Martha was distracted with much serving. Distracted, not burdened. You know, as in there, there's another story that she is listening to and living in, a louder reality that seeks to drown out any competing narratives and even uses her to bring others back into that reality. Lord, Do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. Martha isn't looking for someone to help 
her peel the potatoes. In her world, in her context, Martha's anxiety makes perfect sense. It would be natural for her to be upset over the fact that her little sister is seated with the men and has become a disciple of Rabbi Jesus. Boundaries have been crossed. Social norms have been disregarded. And given those circumstances, it isn't difficult to imagine what's going through Martha's mind in this moment. I mean, this is disgraceful. What will happen to us? My sister has joined this band of men. What will the neighbors say? What will the family think? And after this, who would want to marry her? All of this drives her to the point where she is trying to put her words into Jesus' mouth rather than receive the words coming out of His. Lord, tell her to help me. You see, Jesus, He doesn't respond to her words. He responds to what Martha meant by her words. Jesus knows what's on her heart. He knows that he is crossing boundaries and stretching social norms, creating awkward situations. He knows that he is the one behind Martha's stress and anxiety. He has created this situation. So he says, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. But one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. These are words of compassion from Jesus. He can see everything that is affecting Martha in this situation and that her her reaction is much more complex than mere jealousy that her sister gets to sit and relax while she does all the work. Martha can sense everything that is at risk because of this interaction and everything that, that isn't right. She's captive to a world that Jesus has come to turn upside down. But Jesus' gracious invitation breaks through all of it. One thing is necessary. One thing. And all of these other things that are causing you stress and anxiety, they are not the defining factors of your life or Mary's life. They are not the things that will determine her present or your future They are not the things that will determine your reputation. One thing is necessary. It's the one thing that King David described in Psalm 27. Where he writes, One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. For He will hide me in His shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of His tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. This is exactly what Mary has found sitting at Jesus' feet the good portion that will not and cannot be taken away from her. Nothing else matters except Jesus' words, His teaching, His yoke that is easy and offers rest. Because He is the Son of Man who came not to be served, but to serve, to give His life as a ransom for many, that, th- that all may dwell in his house all the days of their lives. When is the last time that you stopped to listen to Jesus? The last time you set aside your everything demanding your time and energy and 
focus in order to spend time in His house or in His Word and, and sit at His feet. Or another question might be, what is keeping you from doing so? Are the Scriptures too intimidating for you to approach, too complicated, too difficult to understand? Or is it that doing nothing is the intimidating part, the challenging part? You know, the thought of putting away your phone, turning off your screens, silencing the noises that you surround yourself with so you don't have to be alone with yourself. Do you have this ingrained work ethic where all of your time must be productive? Can't waste a single second. The people who are just sitting around drive you crazy. I know I can tell you what keeps me from sitting at the feet of Jesus. It's sermon prep, Bible study prep. Worship logistics, where opening the Bible becomes part of the job and about what I can do in service to Jesus rather than what He has come to bring me. Or is it your past, the things you've done, the things you've said, the things that you've thought, and you can't bear to think about what you might come across in the Word of God that'll put those things right back in your face? Because there is a truth there in the Word of God that reveals who we are. That we are a people inclined to despise the Word of God and His teaching. To resist any opportunity, any invitation in which God invites us to rest in Him. And how able we are to come up with anything and everything to avoid sitting at his feet. See, the Lord looks upon you and He sees the many things distracting you from Him, distracting you from what He offers you. He sees that you are anxious and troubled about many things and that His invitation to you will turn your world upside down and upset everything and still He graciously calls you to Himself. His word goes forth and breaks through all that holds you captive. He doesn't just sit back and wait for you to choose Him, to make time for Him. You are the one that He seeks. He lovingly pursues you with everything that He has. Remember, Martha may have opened the door to receive Him, but Jesus is the one who entered the village. He initiated all of this. And this morning, He has brought you here to this place, His house, that you may sit at His feet, that you may do nothing but listen to His life-giving words and receive His gifts, the good portion that cannot be taken away from you, the one thing that you need above all else, where He offers Himself to you. He offers Himself as a teacher to shape and form you in the image that He created you, that you may sit and marvel as the Lord of the universe reveals His heart to you, as He reveals His will for you and His creation. Now, He sees the smaller stories that have been holding you captive, and He has come to bring you back into His story the one that begins with creation and ends with new creation and has your redemption and salvation at the heart of it. He offers Himself to you as Lord, the one who hides you in His shelter in the day of trouble, who conceals you under the cover of His tent, who will lift you high upon the rock. He is the Lord over everything that seeks to drown you and swallow you. And there is nothing in this world that can separate you from His love and His protection. He offers to you, Himself to you as Savior. The one who was lifted high upon a cross 
the place where he took upon himself all that troubles you, all that brings you anxiety and robs you of rest and brings you shame, the place from which he serves you. Where he feeds you his very body and blood for the forgiveness of your sins, where he offers you a feast of victory where you can taste and see that he is the one who has conquered everything, sin, death, Satan, everything that seeks to rule over you in your life, he has conquered all of it. Forgiveness, life, and salvation are yours in Christ, and no one, nothing, can take that away from you. What is Jesus up to in your story? He's inviting you to sit at his feet to spend time in His Word, to receive His gifts, to know that you have an audience of one and He loves you more than you could possibly imagine. He cherishes you. You are His. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. For He will hide me in His shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of His tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all human understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.